تمام طب نروح بقى نروح للسكرين ذات نفسها ونعملها داتا شو كده تمام ممتاز كده باين عندك يا محمد طيب اه ممتاز نروح لحضرتك الدكتور احمد ونتشرف ان حضرتك تلقي علينا المحاضره ولكم درينج ديفايسز طبعا دكتور احمد مصطفى عبد الرحمن غني عن التعريف استاذ طب وجراحه العين بالقصر العيني ورئيس الجمعيه المصريه لتعليم طب المستمر في طب وجراحه العيون اي جي اس كيو اي ونتشرف بمشاركته معنا في الرمضيون وبهذه المحاضره المتميزه في جلوكوما انا مصطفى بحضرتك فن الله يخليك يا دكتور محمد بهنيك على المجموعة الهيلة اللي هي يعني أبهرتني والله على المستوى الشخصي في الحفاظ على الـ Continuous Activity Continuous Positive Activity أنا بهنيك والله جدا 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 متشكر هذا If I'm going to start يمكن أحب أن أنا أعزي زملائنا الأعزاء طبعا في المغرب وليبيا يعني قلوبنا معهم فعلا ونرجو أن ربنا سبحانه وتعالى يكشف الغمة ويتقبل الشهداء ويرحمهم يا رب ويسبرهم ويعني ندعو لبعض إن شاء الله دائما بإذن الله uh, Today I will go through the glaucoma drainage uh, devices um, uh, The rest of the title is um, sharing the experience uh, My aim is not to review the books what's written in the It's uh, in the chapters and books is present everywhere. Just uh, letting you know what I really do uh, at actual uh, practice. So it will be divided into two parts. The first part, some basic information, and then uh, some cases, uh, complex cases and uh, complications. Uh, if I just feel that uh, you still uh, to. So um, this was uh, the glaucoma drainage device that I did uh, 25 uh, years ago. And if you see, it is uh, an encapsulated um, uh, plate. And the plate is very anterior. And uh, you can see the tube here is short and the cornea is uh, decompensated. Uh, because of uh, those Uh, pictures which I used to see 25 years ago, I refrained from using the ballast for quite a long period of time, and I thought that the complication rate of the valves is quite high unless some adjustments are done. Uh, and we published on that uh, together with uh, Dr. Hal Al Hilali on the complications of Ahmed valve, um, in particular in the pediatric age group and the complications were a lot. That's why. I just have a kind of concerns about the implantation. But what happened recently, I'm going to let you know what happened recently. Generally speaking, the idea of the valve is to have a tube inserted inside the anterior chamber, and this tube will drain the equus into the episcleral uh, space where there is a plate, and then the equus will flow around the plate. And then from this area around the plate, will diffuse into the subconjunctival and some thin and subtenous space. This episcleral plate is firmly sutured to the sclera and gradually will be covered by a thick flap of tenons and conjunctival. And it is the size and permeability of this fibrous capsule will determine the flow of the equus from surrounding the, the, the plate to the subconjunctival space and will determine the level of the intraocular pressure. So what happened is that the equus moving through the tube and then around the plate and then through the wall of a fibrous capsule, periplate capsule, into the surrounding space. Now this movement of the equus will control the intraocular pressure. And this fibrous capsule is formed between the fourth and six weeks. These are the common implants available, the valved implants, or what's known as the flow restrictive implants, but there is a kind of a valve for resistance to the flow of the equus. And the famous one is the Ahmed glaucoma implant. And the recent uh, designs are those with the flexible plate seven and eight. Uh, the body is formed of silicone, which induces less reaction. 
And the FP7 is basically for the adults and eight is for the pediatric age group. For the non valved implants, the most common is the barbell, uh, or there is an Indian version which is called the Orolap. <clears throat> And this is a non valved implant and available in two sizes. And then we have the clear path, which is Ahmed design, so that the new medical world develops an implant which is more or less similar to the barbell, which is called the clear path, which is like Ahmed valve, but without a valve. And then we have the Moltino, and Moltino was the first, actually one of the first implants, or if not the first. And then there is a kind of introduction of a new implant, which is the Moltino 3 uh, to the market. So actually what's available around us is Ahmed Val, FP8 and FP7, and we have the Barvel implants, and we have the clear path, and we have the uh, Moltino implant. And this is the demonstration of the clear path Ahmed, which is non valve implant. And for any non valve implant, we need to occlude the lumen in the early post-operative period to avoid hypotony. And this is the Moltino 3, which is now coming to the market. They are trying to uh, get a kind of new look and then to invade the market once more, and it's actually available. Um, Dr. Moltino, I'm proud to have this picture with the late Professor Moltino. Uh, and we have Ahmed Mateen, the inventor of uh, the Ahmed glaucoma valve. When do we implant? Generally speaking, the implants are considered a secondary procedure after failure of a primary procedure. Like a patient underwent trabeculectomy or other kind of glaucoma operation, and then it doesn't function properly, and then we are going to think of an implant. And the idea of Implants in general is to get the aqueous away from the limbal area where there is a lot of scar. But sometimes it's a primary procedure when you have a patient uh, that is probably uh, will have the trabeculectomy or the similar operations are going to fail, like the uveitic and neovascular glaucomas, uh, like the FXX, like the pseudofex like the post-traumatic, post-keratoplasty, and then you're seeing that if you're going to do trabeculectomy, the trabeculectomy is most probably going to fail or not uh, to survive. So you are going to consider the valve as a primary decision. So this is a primary procedure. When it comes to the primary open angle glaucoma, there is actually a long way between the disease and the consideration of the valve, because we go through the medical therapy, laser trabeculoplasty, there is a place for MIGS, then penetrating surgery, which is trabeculectomy, and non-penetrating surgery, like deep sclerectomy, and then we will consider valve and cycloablation. So again, it is usually not of the uh, primary indication, though some of the surgeons mastering the glaucoma drainage devices may consider the glaucoma drainage device in advanced patients with a primary open angle glaucoma as a first procedure. The preoperative preparation it is just from the practice. We need to examine the conjunctive because in some patients with long history of anti-glaucoma medications or multiple operations, the conjunctiva is fibrous and is adherent to the epsclera. And then you can prepare your patient for surgery and then take your patient to the OR and then realize there is no tissue to elevate. And then you are at that time have to take a different decision. So we need to test the mobility of the conjunctiva. I ask the patient to look down and I take a micro sponge and then I move the conjunctiva so as not to have an intraoperative surprise. And then we need to look for the, uh, at the iris surface for any new vascularization that has to be managed first. If we can, that would be great. We look at the anterior chamber depth if the anterior chamber is very shallow, those patients are not suitable for uh, valves unless the anterior chamber is deepened with a cataract surgery. The site you are planning to put the tube, please do gonioscopy because sometimes those parts are having peripheral anterior synechia. And when you go for tube insertion, you can push the iris and you can get bleeding from this area. So please examine the site of insertion. The condition of the lens is very important because if your patient is pseudofecant, then you can place the tube in the sulcus 
it is not necessary to be in the anterior chamber. Or if the patient is having cataract, you can do a combined surgery at the same time where you remove the cataract and you place the implant. So in this patient, you can see the conjunctiva is totally scarred. There is no tissue to elevate. Then there is no place for glaucoma drainage device. And you can go for something like cycloablation, even if there is a good vision in this eye. This is another case, and you can see the conjunctiva is totally fibrotic. There is no tissue to elevate. There is no place for a valve here, but you can go for, for cycloablation, which is a very, very good uh, alternative. And it's a very, very good weapon at your hand at some uh, situations. The anesthesia, there are no specific requirements for the uh, anesthesia, but usually topical anesthesia is not sufficient. And it's left for the choice of the surgeon. So when it comes to surgical technique, we place first a corneal traction suture because this will help in exposure. This is 7-0 bicranial suture and take it as deep as possible so as not to tear uh, through the cornea. And then I use the mark. This is, this is the superior temporal quadrant, which is the most common quadrant used for the implant. Next common quadrant for insertion would be the lower nasal quadrant. And then I mark the site, the site of the lateral rectus and the superior rectus. And I know this is the area where I'm going to place my implant. And I do a generous uh, fornix-based conjunctival incision. You can see this patient is pseudophytic, which is a very suitable case for glaucoma drainage device. In the old days, I used to hook the recti so as to give myself the best exposure. But nowadays, I don't do that. And I don't, I don't need that, actually. With the corneal traction suture and proper traction, you can have a good view. The next step is that I take the caliber and I mark 12 millimeters. The classic insertion site of the implant is usually 8 to 10 millimeters, so it's usually the anterior border is here. But actually, in the technique that I prefer, and I, I actually will show you this uh, shortly, I like to get the implant even more posterior, as posterior as I can. So I mark 12 millimeter, and then you can see the 12 millimeter, and then I'll divide the 12 millimeter into three millimeter areas. So three millimeter, three millimeter, three millimeter, four, three millimeters. And then I'm going to use the crescent, the small crescent, which is a very, very, very good instrument for a scleral dissection. I'm going to make a mark here in the sclera, incision in the sclera. The first is three millimeter, and then the next incision will be the next three millimeter, and then the next three millimeter, and then finally the fourth one. And what I'm going to do is going to do tunnels. So every tunnel is almost three millimeter. So taking care while dissecting the sclera, I think. Those of you performing um, a band and retinal detachment surgery are quite comfortable with the scleral dissection. Extra caution should be, um, should be exerted by the beginners because yes, the crescent blade is very good, but it can penetrate uh, the eye um, if you are not cautious. Uh, I use the uh, second instrument just to depress the sclera and to allow the exit of the uh, crescent. So again, this is the first tunnel. And then, so this is the first tunnel, the second tunnel, the third tunnel. They are all dissected in the same way. And then the large part, I make it like a flap. I know there are some techniques which you can put the tube through a tunnel, but then actually I found that the insertion of the tube through the tunnel is difficult, at least at my hands. Therefore, I decided to make a flap or I can have it like a trap door so that I can cut it like this, leaving one border intact and I suture one corner at the end. Anyway, I need to put the tube under the visualization. Then when I have those three tunnels, I'm going to place the uh, sutures for the plate. You can place those before putting the plate. So this is um, pre-placed sutures. The suture, the suture here is non-absorbable. Use non-absorbable. I know there are some schools 
they use absorbable sutures, but I think the safety of the non-absorbable sutures cannot be uh, overemphasized. Uh, uh, this is 5O uh, FE bond, which is non absorbable, and the needle is a spatulated needle. And any needle we, go, we are going to um, pass through the sclera, please make it or use the spatulated ones because um, they have less chance of perforating the sclera. And then this is the loop of the suture. This is a pre placed suture. And then <clears throat> we get the valve. We do what's known as priming. By priming, we inject through the tube, and then we will get the fluid coming from the surface. And once we see the fluid, this means the two membranes for the valve mechanism, the two membranes are now separated from each other, and the valve is Uh, uh, now we are using the um, uh, non absorbable 5 or AC bond on a spatulated needle to fix the plate to the sclera, guided by the posterior tunnel. So that I'm just even more posterior, so that a total of like 13 millimeters. And here, after we place the second suture, we can have uh, a loop. And then we will cut this loop, of course. Priming of the valve is very important. Priming of the valve is very important because if you forget to prime the valve, and by priming, we mean we inject BSS uh, through the tube until the fluid comes from the surface. And there is a warning written on the valve, don't forget to prime the tube because the priming will open the valve. Otherwise, the valve will not function and the, uh, the, the intraocular pressure will not benefit from the implantation. At the time of sliding the, the implant on the globe, you have to make sure that the implant slides easily on the surface and it goes comfortably posterior through the use of the artery forceps to make a very good posterior dissection. You don't want a valve that you push it posterior, then it will come back. You push and it will come back. No, this will never ensure a good position of the implant. And then again, I'm here passing the suture through the eyelets of the body because we need to fix it. And here is the tube. We cut it beveled up if you are going to place it in the anterior chamber. And then we will thread, we will pass the tube underneath the scleral flaps, below the first flap, the second tunnel, and the third tunnel. So in this way, I'm having like a long continuous tunnel, but interrupted because there is no way to make a long tunnel that is nine millimeters through one cut. So here is the tube. Those tissues will get approximated, and then you will feel the tube as placed inside the sclera. And believe me, this is one of the points that made my life very happy is to hide the sclera and the plate posterior. And now you can see the plate is beautifully secure. And then the tube is beveled up if you are going to place it inside the anterior chamber. And then you are going to place the tube inside the anterior chamber using a 23 gauge needle. What I do in practice, I do a paracentesis incision and then I inject helon in this area to make it deeper. And then at the time of insertion of the tube at the limbus, make sure that the needle will pass parallel to the iris or better to go more deeper towards the iris, so that looks if you're going to touch the surface of the iris. The idea here is to avoid having the tube near the cornea, to avoid those, uh, continuous loss of the corneal endothelium. So the entry into the anterior chamber is very critical to be away from the back of the cornea. What will determine the direction of the tube inside, inside the anterior chamber is the direction of penetration with your needle. If your needle is going posterior towards the iris, the tube will follow this direction. And I like to deepen it with helium and remove it at the end of the surgery. So if you look at this case, a pseudofecate, nice suitable case, 
Then we have like three millimeter length of the anterior chamber. I like to have a good length of the anterior chamber. And the tube looks resting on the surface of the iris and the bevel is up. And if we are planning to place the tube behind the iris, we can have the bevel down so as not to be occluded by the iris. Now, this is just a short video. It was uh, published on the American Academy website, and I was uh, awarded for this video, which is the triple tunnel Ahmed glaucoma valve. The first tunnel, second tunnel, and third tunnel. Again, the crescent size is very good, but look, I like to do like a counter pressure on the sclera to allow the blade to come so as not to move towards the globe itself. And then the septum. Yes, we like to do diathermy sometimes. If there is a minimal bleeding, it's acceptable, but otherwise I like to do good therapy uh, and to have the uh, field almost bloodless. Now, and this is the, uh, the flap, so that towards at the time or at the area of the insertion, I don't like to have it like a tunnel because the insertion of the tube through a tunnel is not easy. This could be a trap door so that it's not necessary to be uh, flat. And you have seen the priming and then pushing the first the tube through the first tunnel and then threading through the second tunnel. It is just three continuous tunnels, but again, I cannot make a long, just over time, a long time. And then again, those tissues will heal, having the two complete inside the sphere and placing the suture. In this case, it was not a pre placed, I just placed the valve and then suture. Then, like there is nothing now, and then only a tube is seen inside the eye. And here is the tube, and the tube is behind the iris. And uh, this is the triple tunnel, which I'm going to do, I'm doing at the practice. And again, I'm sharing you my personal experience. I know there are lots of techniques, and every technique has the advantage and disadvantage. And by ultrasonography, you can see a large plate around the, a large bleb around the plate of the valve, which we uh, report uh, repeatedly. Again, the tube is beautifully covered inside the sclera. And then we need almost like three millimeter, and roughly it is half, at least half of the distance from the limbus to the pupil. So that if the tube, is, the pupil here is slightly dilated, if it is half of the distance, that's quite good length of the tube inside the anterior chamber. Uh, now, um, here I placed the, uh, I put the plate and then I'm going to put the sutures. Again, there are some variations in the technique, but you need a very good assistant. You need a very good assistant while you are doing the valve because we're going to retract the conch, retract the plate. You will need um, someone to help you uh, nicely. And then you can cover the plate if you wish with a layer of tenon, if you want to add more protection, if you think you need. And you can, again, you can see enough length of the tube inside the anterior chamber. If the conjectiva is fibrous due to a previous surgery, like here, that you can see that the conjectiva is nice posterior but not anterior, you can do conjectiva hydro dissection. You can inject BSS sub -tenone. And then you can see here that the, 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 there is a plane of fibrosis due to previous uh, glaucoma operations. And again, I can try to overcome this by injecting fluid and then massaging this fluid to get more of the uh, conjunctiva, uh, as you see, um, so as not to dissect that uh, posterior. And actually, it is achievable at the end, but again, you need to manage, and as you see here, you use the force of the fluid to dissect the rest of the conjunctiva near uh, the limbus. If you wish to cover the tube uh, or the conjunctiva, the, the sclera is thin, for example, in recurrent book tunnels or for any reason of the thinning of the sclera, and you don't want to make tunnels and to, um, to do flaps, even long flaps, you can cover the tube with a patch of the sclera or pericardium. You can have this patch of the sclera, which we fashion from uh, any corneal graft. If the patient is having cataract, we can combine the uh, implant with a cataract at the same time, so that after we place the valve, and I usually take the tube so as not to obscure my vision at the time of cataract surgery. I place the tube inside uh, the tunnel, and then uh, this will hide the, the, the tube. Of course, we start by uh, placing the implant while the, the globe is pressurized first, and then I finished the most important part 
of the uh, implantation now, then I'll go for cataract surgery and implantation, and I'll go at the end for the uh, this elastic inside and chamber. I can place the implant in the anterior chamber because it's usually deepened after cataract surgery, or you can go behind the iris as you like. And again, if you want to go behind the iris, especially if the cornea is borderline, then you need to go two millimeter behind the iris, and then you go straight, just straight. That behind the iris it will go through the ciliary body and will uh, appear uh, here. And this is the sulcus fixation. This is not part of the primary. This is sulcus fixation. So you will see it, but here it is again, it's better to have the bevel on the posterior aspect of the tube so as not to be occluded by the iris. Uveitis is one of the good indications for a glaucoma drainage device. Uh, honestly, uh, nowadays I tend to go first for angle surgery so that to do uh, extensive goniotomy and remove the sinusitis before considering the glaucoma drainage device. But again, this is just a kind of a change in my practice. But again, glaucoma drainage device is one of the very good indication is the uh, post uveitis. And you can see the evidence of the old uveitis here. It's not different from, from any operation. But again, remember that while preparing, look for the artery forces, I tend to spread it posterior to expose this clearer as posterior as I can so that when you push the valve, it is comfortable. And I tend to mark half the distance between the superior rectus and lateral rectus, just to know where is the middle area where the tube uh, will be. And then again, I am marking the site of the, the triple tunnel, and then uh, continue the search. Sometimes we are surprised by uh, something which is, you, you do not expect, like in this patient, while dissecting the upper temporal quad quadrant, I found that the is clearer. Uh, the fundus of the patient was normal, so that again I thought, is it uh, is it good to go for the lower uh, quadrant? Then I thought, no, I'm going to continue my surgery, so that I'll place the plate over this area for an extra support, and I'll do um, two, maybe two uh, or uh, three tunnels, in, uh, two tunnels instead of four tunnels, and, and I place the plate over this area, so that you can face some anatomical abnormalities while um, manageable. So uh, this patient was again a, a difficult situation. Now I'm, I'm, I'm placing, I'm just marking the eye and then look at the area of the equator. This is equatorial, the kind of equatorial staphyloma or pigmentation. So I, I know this is a, a frightening when you see this, especially for the first time, but I found this is some of the anatomical variations you can find this, but again you can think why not to uh, implant. But uh, I, I'm not I'm not going to dissect or to make tunnels over this area. But I still can just place the plate here and make tunnels anterior. So again, uh, prepare yourself that you can face some something. But again, they are all uh, manageable. But in this case, there was an actual staphyloma in the superior area. So there is no way here is to put an implant. The sclera is so much uh, thinned out. And again, what I'm going to do is just to make use of the rest of the uh, the rest of the uh, subtenon the space. I'm going to go to the lower nasal quadrant. So the first preferred quadrant is the upper temporal, of course. Then if not, you go for the lower nasal quadrant. It's again, not difficult to implant here. So it's uh, it's like the superior, the upper uh, temporal, uh, exactly. In the bophthalmic eyes, as you see, prepare yourself for thick tenon so that you are going to encounter thick tenon and you may cut some of this tenon. But again, the, the technique is the same. And even in the bophthalmic eye, you can make a uh, tunnel, triple tunnel. And again, this is the flap that I'm going to place the tube underneath the flap. And in this technique in particular, I don't need uh, coverage to the tube, like I'm going to use um, a sclera or I'm going to use a pericardium. Okay? Usually, um, I don't need anything. The tube is inside the sclera. And again, the priming is very important. Don't forget the priming. This is the oral lap, which is equivalent to the um, barbell. 
you place the implant vertical and then you make it horizontal. The difficulty uh, in this implant that uh, it has to go, it has wings, it has to go under the recti, so the dissection is a bit uh, larger. But again, it's doable, and you have to manage uh, that because there is no valve. You have to think of the tube. Are you going to uh, put sutures in the tube? I usually uh, put sutures, or you can put a stent. So for the non-valved implants, you need to manage it. And here I'm using the vitral. I'm going to use two uh, sutures of vitral to occlude the lumen uh, completely in the early post-operative period. And then it's again the same. It's almost half the distance from the limbus to the pupil. This is a good landmark. So thinking of the size of the tube. So just a revision of the surgical technique that we use vicral uh, corneal traction suture and make it as deep as possible. The chance of perforation is very rare. Large conjunctival incision, good scleral exposure using uh, the uh, artery forceps, three tunnels, priming the implants. The nurse uh, can be trained to do that. You don't have to do this yourself, but you, uh, you need to uh, uh, learn and teach the, them how to do it. Uh, to attach the plate to the epithelia, then uh, if there is an, if it is a non valve implant, and actually for the beginner, I don't recommend non valve implants because the post operative management is greater than those in the valve implants. And then you can place a patch graft over the tube if needed, and then you can close the conjunctiva. And sometimes I don't close the conjunctiva with sutures, just the thermi is enough in the majority of patients. Now, as I had shown you in the first slide, the, my patient that I have done 25 years ago, and when I see this patient nowadays with the corner that is decompensated and the, 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 the plate that is very anterior. Now, what's different? What's different? What are the tricks that I'm adopting years ago that uh, made my life happier? First of all is the posterior placement of the plate. So that when I place the plate 12 to 13 millimeter, once you open the lid, you don't see the plate at all. Okay, this is number one. Number two, I place the tube inside the sclera through the three tunnels so that I don't have to cover with something and I don't have to look for an additional conjunctiva if I'm going to place a covering over the tube. I actually don't need. I place the tube inside the sclera in the majority of the cases. And then again, the interocular portion of the tube is away from the corner. So I pay attention very much to the point of insertion of the tube to be away from the corner. And sometimes it is touching the iris. There is no problem that it can induce a little atrophic changes in the iris, but there is no. Now, why, why do I believe in posterior fixation? Why do I, I, I have to go that posterior instead of eight millimeter, because I found an article that the plate is placed subtenons. It is not subconjunctiva, it is subtenons, okay? Now, if you go posterior, they found that the tenons capsule is thinner. I was just looking for something to explain why the results, uh, uh, results are better when the plate is uh, pushed posterior, because you, uh, mostly that the tenons capsule is thinner posterior and there are no smooth muscles in the uh, tenons layer as detected anterior. This may be an explanation why the posterior fixation of implants. So that if you have a patient like this, I actually I hate this appearance very much, where you have a plate that's far, very anterior, a tube that is the sub extra ocular part is uh, short, the intraocular part is long, too long, and then you can find that the plate is surrounded complete by fibrosis, nothing. Then you expect that the pressure is high and the cornea is bad, so that I don't like this appearance at all. Now, if the valve, if the body is placed anterior, you can get some uh, cosmetic issues like here, like in this girl, where you can see the valve is causing some asymmetry. And actually this eye was non seeing eye and uh, the lady asked for removal of the implant to overcome this cosmetic issue. Is there a role of anti-metabolites like mitomycin T? Lots of debates and lots of results in the literature. I think they are generally helpful, but again, there are no conclusive evidence in the literature. 
regarding the efficacy of uh, mitomycin, and there are different techniques of um, application of anti-metabolites. Some of them is to soak the body with uh, mitomycin and to put some cotton sponge around. The post-operative course, it's usually four to six weeks, uh, steroid antibiotics. For the valved implants like Ahmed, usually we stop the anti-glaucoma medications to avoid hypotony because the opening pressure of the valve is eight millimeters. So that if the pressure is below eight, theoretically, the valve should not function. For the non-valved implants like uh, the barbells, uh, like the Orolap, we need to, uh, usually we will occlude the tube. So the glaucoma medications are usually continued until the, there is a flow through the, the, the tube, whether by the, when the non-absorbable sutures lose their efficacy, or when the absorbable sutures lose their efficacy, or if we are going to remove the stent, so that we put the patient on anti-glaucoma medication. That's why I advise the beginners, please, you can use the valved implants at the beginning. Actually, the valved ones, like Ahmed valve, is the one that's available in our region. An important issue is what's known as the hypertensive phase, so that now you placed your implant successfully and uh, the pressure was nice, uh, 10, 12, 11, uh, you are happy, everybody is happy, and then after a month or two, and then the pressure is above 21. The patient will come with a pressure of 25. This is called hypertensive phase, and this hypertensive phase is one of the features of the implants in general. It is defined as elevation of the pressure about 21 within the first six months post-operative. And it actually happens in a good proportion and percentage of patients. And it's more common in the, val in the valve implant. And what is the mechanism? They think that the glaucometer, the, glau the glaucometer patients, they have what's known as the glaucometer sequence. And this sequence contains pro uh, inflammatory uh, mediators, and it will promote the formation of the fibrous capsule around the plate. Now, at the time of formation of this fibrous capsule, the pressure can go up. And then with remodeling of the wall of the fibrous capsule and get some greater permeability of the uh, wall, and then the pressure will be better on the better side. And this is the mechanism. So the equus that's flowing through the implant is having a role in the formation of this fibrous capsule. That's why they think that the valve implants, which allow the flow of the equus from the early post-operative, from the first day, the first post-operative, the first post-operative moment, actually, that equus will promote the formation of the fibrous capsule, and you expect more of this hypertensive phase. And this is part of the, you, you have to know this because this is part of the post-operative management. How to manage this hypertensive phase? And actually, there are lots of work around this, like are the anti-metabolites effective or not? Some studies with some agonists. Uh, if we're going to resect the tenons capsule at the time of uh, implantation, will it be helpful or not? Maybe, nothing conclusive. Uh, some injection of uh, longer acting steroid subtenum, or some of the suggestions again. Some work on the supratenum implantation of the uh, implant, which is technically uh, very difficult. And then uh, these are some common issues which you can practice is to use the equus suppressant in the early post operative so that you don't want more equus. That's why there is a tendency to use. Um, equus suppressants, even if the pressure is adequately controlled. Because there is a, a theory that if you are going to reduce the equus, this will probably reduce the thickness of the fibrous capsule, periplate fibrous capsule. So and actually, that's what I do in practice. If the patient is having pressure 12, 13, um, I, I say to the patient who are going to use equus suppressant in the first three post-operative months. And then another important point is to do an ocular massage, because if you do an ocular massage uh, through the lower lid, it will push more equus through the tube, and then you will push more equus around the plate, and then it will push more equus through the wall of the periplate capsule. It can do something good. So then actually what I do if the patient is having uh, actual high pressure, I advise for a massage 
and then um, I use aqueous suppressants. And I, you can, you if you want to use some steroids, if you see lots of reaction, you can use as well some of the topical steroids. If you find a, um, a tenons capsule, sometimes tenons develop around the plate. Uh, you can do needling, there is no problem. But then actually, I play very little with the valve um, if the pressure is high in the post-operative period. Because I know there are some reports on the needling and in excision of the periplate fibrous capsule. But and actually, in practice, I found that most of those procedures uh, will result in a temporary effect. But anyway, if you see... Um, if you see a tenons, but I actually I don't see tenons because the plate is very posterior. But if your plate is anterior and you can see an actual tenon, you can go for needling of this tenon. And actually, one of the suggestions which, which I have heard uh, at the American Academy, it was the uh, conference of the um, of the uh, of the company itself. Uh, they recommended repeated mitomycin injection in the vicinity of the implant but uh, I didn't read uh, this uh, article. Uh, now, if the pressure again is high and out of control and it could happen, the patient received one implant and then it doesn't work and then another implant and the patient is actually affected and then what to do? And actually, I don't think there is a place for uh, a third implant and I go for cyclophotocoagulation. Again, I believe so much in cyclophotocoagulation, they are terribly needed in some patients where nothing else could be done. And for this patient, I did micropulse, and then I supplemented with another uh, session of micropulse. But again, you can face this situation and you need to decide on what to do. So by this, I just um, concluded the basic aspect. So Dr. Mohammed, if any of the colleague has a question, before sharing some of the nice cases uh, from the practice. Uh, Astazan, Hadraku, Lawfi, Zomala, I had them Zomala and I saw the social basic technique with all the glucoma drain device. Munkin, you keep a comment for chat. Munkin, I'll let the story and Hamad has a shoof. My child, no Haga had a kid, see her. أنا عندي بس الـ recording is going on. Okay. ممكن نسأل دكتور محمد بدل من طارق. Is that possible? دكتور أحمد إزاي حضرتك؟ إزاي حضرتك؟ شكرا دكتور أحمد على المحاضرة الجميلة ديت. Uh, and I could tie out of the uh, experience that uh, what is the future of glaucoma drainage implant? How you see this operation going forward? The hack. The hack at the second slide, the preoperative, should we uh, recommend a specular microscopy the glaucoma drainage implant? We know that there is correlation between the tube implant to the intercell cell count. الحاجة الثانية why I choose this kind of operation if I know from the beginning there is multiple point of failure we have the tube, we have the plate, we have to traumatize the tissue so why even I know this is like the last resort maybe the last resort هي الأسئلة نعيف شوية بالنسبة لبعض الدكاترة يعني اللي حضرين معنا ممكن بس دي اسئله ساذجه انا حبيت بس ايه يعني برين ستورمنج معاكم. واخر حاجه سلايد اللي انت قبل الاخيره قلت يعني التيوب التيوب لينز. ريجاردلس ذا سايز اوف ذا تيوب وي نو ذير از ا كورليشن بيتوين ذا اي او بي نوت ايفن ذا تيوب لينز اند ذا اندوسيليال سيل كاونت. سو ذا بوينت از واي اول اوف ذيس تروماتايزنج اوبريشن فروم ذا بيجينينج وشكرا دكتور احمد. و فورجيف مي يا جماعه لو الاسئله كانت ساذجه شويه للبعض شكرا لا يا طارق دايما اسئلتك لا ثانك يو فيري ماتش يا طارق طارق يعني از از ا دير فريند اند هي سو ماتش كونسيرن اباوت جلوكوما اند هي ثينكس ذات جلوكوما از ون اوف ذا ميستيريس بروبلمز اتفضل دكتور Uh, I think uh, uh, the glaucoma drainage devices will uh, persist. If you think of the future of those, 
because uh, the 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 glaucoma drainage devices are considered like uh, trabeculectomy when trabeculectomy couldn't be done so the outcome is not comparable to the mix for example but there is a continuous uh, improvement in the technique to avoid the complications but i think they are going to uh, persist but the point with meticulous techniques you can avoid most of the complications that's what i have seen and you will see in the next part of that how much the complications are sometimes very silly and uh, avoidable uh, but they uh, they will continue for how long i really don't know but uh, we need them you know for the uh, for the success in glaucoma sometimes when you do the operation um, and actually it's very rare to have an operation which has a lifelong success and actually, I haven't seen this in uh, practice, except when you do uh, like uh, a cataract surgery and something in angle closure glaucoma, sometimes everything is over and you are not going to do anything else. But for the most of the uh, glaucomas, uh, they might need second intervention in like five years, for example, so that which, which is considered something good uh, as well. So this is for your first question. But the second question, um, yes, the studies have shown uh, like um, st some like 6% loss of the endothelium annually. Some of the studies have seen uh, this. Um, but then I think with the, if you think that the cornea is not that um, friendly or is going to suffer, there is a chance that you can move the tube to the sulcus so that to get it away from the cornea to minimize the loss of the endothelium. And of course, technically, you can uh, avoid this complication or you can minimize this if you avoid getting the tube in touch with the back of the cornea. Yes, it is a known complication, but it is it is not significant to the extent like side pass, for example, to withdraw from the market. Okay? So that yes, it could happen on the long term, but again, you really don't know if an implant is put after 30 years, for example, what will happen. I really don't have personal experience uh, with this uh, situation. But I can see that diseases, for example, like congenital glaucomas, even without putting a valve, they are going to have their coronaries decompensated with time, even if you don't put an implant. So that some of the diseases, they progress to this decompensation uh, spontaneously. Uh, the other uh, concern, uh, Yatar, is... Uh, uh, you said is the specular microscopy is a routine of the is a routine pre-op. I really don't know that it's a routine uh, pre-op uh, unless you suspect uh, something uh, clinically. But for every patient to have a routine specular, I don't think uh, this is the practice. Uh, sure. Sorry, I think if you have um, a short tube that is directed towards the cornea is much, much more hazardous than a longer tube that is directed towards the eyes. So that's why the, the, the direction of the tube is very important. And all the time we look at the cornea in the area of the tube, if the cornea is started to show something or not. And I'll show you some of those cases. Shukran, Dr. Ahmed. Mohammed, any more question? No, we can uh, continue. We will have any questions that we can make in the end. Yalla, bin. Or you can try adventures. I mean, they have have some adventures actually. Uh, this is part two. Uh, I think for the pseudofecus, uh, we meet a lot of uh, pseudofecus, and I think the uh, the glaucoma drainage devices are very good options for the uh, pseudophytic uh, patients. Uh, why pseudophytic patients have glaucoma? It's mostly uh, present preoperative, because you know that cataract surgery by itself is uh, protective and the against the glaucoma, and the pressure goes down unless the patient is having the glaucoma uh, basically pre-op, but still you can have, uh, you know, a patient with uh, pseudophytic and glaucoma. I really don't know when the glaucoma started actually. Uh, so, uh, when you have a pseudofecic patient, of course, you think of some uh, considerations because there are multiple options for the management of those uh, patients. Um, uh, 
uh, the degree of the disease and the angle, of course, but I just want to uh, consider a study which is the TVT or the tube uh, versus trap. Uh, the tube versus trap, uh, this was, uh, uh, it was first a five-year study and um, now it is even longer than this. It is, I think, exceeded because the study is, you can see 20, um, is, uh, is 2012 so that um, it is now like even more than 10 years and they still uh, collecting the uh, results. Uh, and actually it was a study like that if a patient is having a recurrent glaucoma or the patient is sedated, will be subjected to have either mitomycin trabeculectomy or to go for a tube shunt and it was the partial implant with more or less a similar number of patients. And interestingly, they reported that the cumulative probability of failures and the operation rate was higher in the mitomycin group. So that the, the conclusion of the study was that uh, those patients can benefit from the glaucoma drainage uh, devices. But again, trabeculectomy would reduce the intraocular pressure to a satisfactory level. You can expect that some of those patients, for example, can go for later on for a glaucoma drainage devices at seen here that some trabeculectomy, they needed a uh, trap. The message here, yes, I know that valves could be, could be better, but still those who are perfecting trabeculectomy or perfecting non-penetrating surgery or some other kinds of surgery according to the degree of glaucoma or angle surgery, still those patients can benefit from, you know, a menu of surgeries, not only one surgery. But it was the conclusion of that study that it's higher success with the, uh, when uh, you use an implant. Now, of course, this is a short tube. Really, I, I feel worried all the time when I see the tube is short, especially if a uh, child, because of the children, they still, the eyes can go. Again, this is the sulcus uh, fixation. Now, this is a very interesting situation. If you face a patient with anterior chamber length, it was a complicated cataract surgery. You can see multiple iridectomies, anterior chamber lens, and the patient is one-eyed, and the pressure was not controlled with uh, medications. And actually, you keep thinking, what could be the best uh, for those patients? There is no black or white, and actually, you need to make a decision which is, um, you know, individualized. And again, for this patient, I thought, why not to uh, uh, put a valve? And I examined the endothelium, uh, as Tari suggested. I found it was low. Uh, uh, so that I'm going to place an implant. I said that I'm going to place uh, the tube uh, completely away from uh, the cornea. So here it is the classic technique that uh, placing the suture, the pre-placed non-absorbable sutures, okay? and then uh, making the tunnels, uh, again, threading the tube. And by the way, if you uh, try this technique, um, and I think my colleagues who have tried it, they give me very good uh, feedback. And again, this is <clears throat> placing the tube. And I'm going to place the tube behind the IOL to add extra safety to the back of the corner. As I'm doing here, you can see the edge. And then the tube is far away from the cornea. And I'm injecting um, triamcinolone uh, just to test for any vitreous. I found some vitreous coming. I want to clean the whole anterior segment because this will have a bad effect on the endothelium, removing uh, the vitreous from the anterior segment and uh, placing the tube behind the IOL. And actually, I was happy that the patient is enjoying an intraocular pressure uh, for quite a long period. The surgery has been done like three years, and the pressure is nice, and the cornea is still uh, like it was pre uh, operative. Now, when you have a young patient presenting with the unilateral glaucoma, uh, you need to do proper gonioscopy because you can find uh, an angle recession glaucoma. Uh, there is nothing that is conclusive for the management of angle recession glaucoma because I haven't seen a large number of patients recruited into a like trap non-penetrating surgery valves. But again, all the options are open here, but this patient has cataract so that I thought I'm going to remove the cataract and to place the tube uh, behind uh, the iris. Again, the, the bevel, uh, it has to be directed uh, posterior. So that I think for the anger recession glaucoma patients, I'm quite comfortable. 
uh, with placing a tube and uh, uh, doing cataract and placing a tube. Now you can look at this complication. The patient presented like this. What is this complication? I really don't know because this uh, a congenital glaucoma and then kind of a staphyloma. And then this is the valve, the child is presenting like this, okay? I really don't know whether um, it was implanted like this in the first place, it is completely eroding, it was very anterior, short part of the tube inside the eye, so that nothing to be done. And actually, if you see this, and I think this valve was placed in a horrible way, and actually it has to be posterior, longer tube, we cannot place a valve like this inside the eye to have the tube very short and it is at the limb to place the implant at the limbus so that all the tissues are suffering with infection. So what I have done, just I explanted this tube, of course, could be a source of infection. Then I did this patient diode, uh, diode cyclophotocoagulation. And this is the picture. Okay. Now, this is a very nice situation. You can see a valve that is mobile. Look, when the patient uh, just opens the lids and then the valve will move anterior. And then if you push it back, the tube will retract. Look, of course, this is very bad uh, on the cornea. And I think because the, the valve was not secure, uh, adequately secured to the sclera uh, using uh, non-absorbable sutures. So the idea here, I need to manage this situation and keep the valve working because the valve is really working, but it's hurting <clears throat> the cornea with every movement. So what I'm trying to do, to, trying to make something which is tailored to the patient. So trying to expose the tube. And by the way, uh, the, the amount of fibrosis around the valve is uh, really very hollow. So what I'm going to do here now, just cutting the fibrous capsule, and you can see how the capsule is thick, and then I'm exposing the body. And this is the capsule that controls the permeability of the implant responsible for the hypertensity. But here, what, what, what do I want to do is just to fix the plate adequately posterior. I don't want to lose this implant. And then through the holes, the fibrous tissue will migrate to the eyelets of the implant. I'm going just cautiously so as not to cut <clears throat> the tube. So again, trying to just remove the 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 expose the the implant cautiously, because I want to create a space and then to resuture this. No sutures at all, so that it was left sutureless. So not 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 even absorbable suture. It was left sutureless. So there is no way to do this. So I'm going to push it posterior and secure it to the sclera, as you see, and then. You know that I'm just going to uh, manage the, the the capsule. I want to cut this ex excess capsule without cutting the tube. So trying to be cautious uh, all uh, the time. Uh, during the m maneuvering the valves, I used to fill the anterior chamber with helium. So what happened, I think it completely came out of the eye. It was the pediatric side. And then... This is the first time to see the plate. Again, it's nice to see the periplate fibrosis, very glistening, very different tissue from the tenons and from the, uh, the any tissue here. It's a very glistening, very soft. And this is the capsule that forms around their body. So what I'm going to do here is just, I know it, it is a kind of uh, different management, but I decided to do that because um, and actually, we came to a, an era where the valves were not present. So every valve counts. So again, I'm cutting the, the posterior wall of the fibrous capsule. Sometimes you cannot remove the posterior wall uh, completely. And I'm here exposing the, the sclera. And then I'm reinserting the implant through the defect in the posterior wall. And now you can see it's going to slide posterior comfortably. And then I'm going to suture to the sclera. I'm going to reinsert the tube again. So it's a kind of, you need to invent something because you can make it easy, like, for example, cutting the tube from inside of the eye and then thinking of something for the glaucoma. Here, I decided to make use of the uh, implant. Now, in the pediatric age group in particular, when the eye closes, there is a possibility that the tube will retract. 
And if the tube retracts, sometimes it gets outside the eye and then the effect is gone. So for this, and actually it was, uh, it is an economical Ahmed glaucoma valve, excuse me, it is tube expander. What is this tube expander? Do, do you hear the voice? Yes, we hear it. Okay, good. Okay, the voice uh, not working. Not working. Okay. What what I'm do what I'm doing here actually is that uh, I'm going to get a segment from the all the tube, and then to use it as uh, uh, something to lengthen the 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 short tube. So the tube was retracted in this uh, boy, and then I got it. I expose, and now I am going to place another segment from Ahmed glaucoma valve. Okay. Okay, good. This is another segment from another valve. Good. So in this video, just the sound would, is disturbing me. It is uh, when you have a tube that's retracted outside the eye, there is a tube expander. Uh, you can connect and then reinsert the tube, but most of the surgeons do not like because it is bulky. So that I thought of getting another segment of the, an old valve because you used to cut segments from the tube and then you can keep those segments in case you need them. And then you can thread it into the segment that or the, the tube that is short and then you can get an extra length. And then this video actually was published on the American Academy as a, something that is very economical. But the difficulty comes is that how to get two tubes inside each other and they are of the same diameter. And then when I searched in the literature, I found that uh, somebody um, have done the same, but actually using a tube of a larger uh, diameter just to accommodate the, uh, the, the Ahmed glaucoma valve tube. But what I have published is to use a similar segment from a, from a similar valve that was implanted. So that again, if you face this situation, remember, you have something economic, you can improve surgery. Uh, this is an Iraqi patient. Um, he's a doctor. He had congenital glaucoma, and you can see half the right. And then he presented with significant cataract, and the tube was very near to the cornea. And that was implanted long uh, time ago, and you can see the coverage of the tube. Now, the situation is that, and actually the, the tube is functioning, but again, the overlying cornea is suffering. And what I thought of, now I'm going to prepare the page. Now, you can see the direction of the tube and then a line of the scarring here. Then I finished the cataract. The cornea could allow for reasonable visualization to place the lens. And then the tube here, I'm going to cut this tube short so that Sometimes we need to cut the tube short if we have an extra length, especially if it is touching the cornea. The pressure in this patient was a kind of borderline. And then, um, um, yes, it was controlled, I said, with medications, but why not to help the valve by injecting through uh, the tube um, to help more flow through the valve? And I have seen this patient actually uh, uh, Two years after the operation, he is now with us, uh, visiting us uh, at Cairo for keratoplasty. I did him keratoplasty on the other eye because the cornea decompensated because of the disease uh, itself. So uh, sometimes we find the tube is long enough to affect the cornea. You can, you can shorten this uh, tube. Like in this patient, uh, after I finished my cataract surgery, I found the tube is quite long so that one side to introduce something inside the tube to uh, stabilize because it's very slippery. And then you can cut it and remove the extra segment and to add more protection, as Tariq said, to uh, the cornea. And this valve was implanted long time ago and the cornea was good. 
but we need to have more protection because the tube was uh, in uh, not very um, accurate. Now we can have tube exposure. I know this, this is a real nightmare. This is a real nightmare if you place, because there are some techniques that place the tube in, deep to the conjunctiva and tenon, and sometimes they don't put anything. They just put tenon and they can uh, put some suture on the tube. Uh, some of those tubes might erode. If the tube erodes, then an infection is going to happen. Unfortunately, the infection can extend intraocular, and I have seen a few patients with this. So that exposure of the tube is not something um, is not something simple, has to be managed. And actually, you need to, uh, if you think uh, that you are going to um, re-suture the conjunctiva above the tube, it will, um, it will definitely uh, re-erode uh, again. So this is not the solution. So for this patient, you know, he's a starting infection and just, I need to manage this. Uh, so, and that was uh, the situation or even a similar patient where the tube is exposed. And then some of those patients, they start to develop even coagulum inside the anterior chamber. So here I'm thinking I'm going to, if you want to manage this situation, that they have this necrotic conjunctiva and this open conjunctiva has to be removed. We need to change the, at the whole atmosphere. And sometimes we rechange the direction of the tube, we remove the tube from the whole area. But for this patient, I thought I'm going to cut this necrotic conjunctiva. I'm going to have more exposure of the tube actually. Still, uh, the infection did not extend intraocular, still possible to control. Uh, then I didn't get the tube out, but I'm going to cover, I'm going to apply sutures to the tube to have the tube uh, more, uh, more conform to the ocular surface instead of being uh, convex. Uh, those sutures are not very tight to occlude the lumen of the tube, but just sufficient to make the tube stable on uh, the uh, ocular surface. Uh, then after doing that, I'm going to get a scleral uh, patch graft. And then I'm going to um, cover with, uh, I'm going to free the conjunctiva from the uh, surrounding tissue and then uh, cover again. So here the tube is no more exposed. There is no direct contact between the tube. You know, this is not easy. We need to apply this section and sometimes we do a release incisions superiorly. We have a lot of conjunctiva to use it. We cut the conjunctiva and not the tenon. But eventually, it is doable. Uh, you can do it. You need. Conject that. Otherwise, the situation will not be permanently resolved. But again, I was successful in covering the tube completely. This is another one referred because of choroidal detachment hypopony. And then if you look at the situation, the, the tube is inserted in the iris and there is a lot of erosion of the tube with the sutures of the infected. And then everything is in a mess and heavy choroidal, you know, the total choroidal effusion and the patient is seeing uh, PL and he's one eye. How to manage this situation, I started by uh, filling the anterior chamber with uh, helon and see the bubbles of the helon. Then uh, what my thinking was is that definitely this tube, I need to manage something in this tube. I need to get this tube away from this area because the whole conjunctiva is necrotic. And then there was a large opening for the tube that accounted as well for the hypotony. Actually, it was, <clears throat> I think, I didn't know this, this type of implant might be something different, but um, again, um, uh, what I'm going to do is that after I pressurize the globe and you can still see the reflex of the choroidal uh, detachment. Uh, just to make uh, a long story short, I'm going to get this tube and reinsert it somewhere else so that I'm going to create a tunnel somewhere else for this tube. And then I'm going to suture the whole uh, area. And then believe me, and this patient recovered completely in almost two weeks. The choroidal detachment disappeared and the patient obtained a satisfactory vision 
for a one for an uh, one eye patient so that again you can have some problems that you need to fashion a solution so this is not a standard again the whole area is heavily vascularized uh, but i don't know what to do with the tube is it was one of the non valve uh, implants actually because there is a stent inside maybe clear art maybe uh, something else uh, but again the i'm not quite sure because the patient is having hypotony one of the problems of the non valve implants actually uh, is the hypotony why did um why I'm changing the direction of the tube because of the conjunctival erosion over here. Usually you cannot keep the conjunctiva over. Uh, you need to manage this. Uh, you know that you actually you need to change the whole uh, environment. So again, I'm suturing the site of the entry carefully. Uh, I know it is, uh, it is, uh, non it is a non-valve implant, so there is a stent, but there might be leaks as well. I really don't know. Uh, the outcome is that the patient is suffering. And I added extra uh, block to the tube here, uh, which is the Vicryl uh, 7.0. I want to restrict the flow as much as I can. I want this eye to have a high pressure. Okay, so that the high pressure is sometimes safer than hypotony, because hypotony in this case, you can see, will end uh, up in losing the eye. So I'm going to place a second site for uh, insertion of the tube. And uh, I'm very happy that I was successful in creating another tube, uh, another tube entry, and then uh, another covering. And it was just because I like the principle of the tunnels. I did one tunnel again to change the direction of the tube, and then I re-implanted. So again, it is just, I'm not telling you that do the same, but, uh, I mean, you have a chance to think of a solution to uh, the patient. Don't let your, uh, the surgery fail. Don't leave a post-operative complication that's the vision threatening. And in this patient, the patient regained his vision. And in the first week, his pressure was 10. And then the patient kept communicating with me. He was from uh, far from me. But eventually, uh, I succeeded, alhamdulillah, in managing this patient. Remember that if the tissue of the conjunctiva is not sufficient, you can do release incision high up in the fullness, not to cut the tenon, it's only you can cut uh, the conjunctiva only the superficial part and leave the tenon, and you can repair uh, most of the defects like what happened here. And I think that was a satisfactory outcome for me. Uh, before the, the uh, you know, that compared to the situation before the surgery. I have this patient, uh, this case is in particular for you. The cornea is borderline and is having a long tube. And I did, this patient is specular. Uh, he's actually is not my patient, but I see the tube touching the cornea here and it's causing a corneal edema. And the whole cornea started to show kind of sympathy to the touch part, and then the transparency is decreased. Now, I thought, why not to help this patient by redirecting the tube away from uh, the cornea? You can cut the tube short, but again, most of the cornea uh, is not very healthy. So I thought uh, in this patient, why not to insert the tube in the sulcus instead of being in the anterior chambers. So just to cut a long story short, I just um, hydro dissect the conjunctiva and then I opened uh, the conjunctiva once more and then I get the tube out. And then I reinserted behind the eyes and I was happy that um, actually that the contact uh, with the corner has been resolved and I feel uh, so much uh, comfortable with this right now. And I'm not going to continue this long uh, video. Now the patient is having um, iris supported lens for the correction of the aphakia and is having a tube that was implanted um, behind the iris in the sulcus and it presented with elevation of the intraocular pressure. When we have this situation, we need to think 
of the cause of the elevation of the intraocular pressure. So that again, I can find some strands of vitreous coming to the tube. If there is no adequate detraction around the tube, the vitreous could occlude the tube. Like here, so the vitreous is occluding the tube. So again, trying to make use of what's available instead of, uh, you know, that instead of surrender, I'm going to surrender and do something else. So why not to try to clean this tube from the vitreous so that I'm injecting diluted triamcine alone and then now you can see lots of vitreous, which is which is not visible actually on the um, on the routine examination. Then I'll go with the oxytome and completely clean the tube from the vitreous, and uh, this valve was actually saved because you can see lots of vitreous uh, occluding the tube. So again, if you insert the valve and then you find the pressure is high, yes, there is a hypertensive phase, but still you can find. Um, some rare finding, interesting situation that needs specific treatment, like in this patient. I just did like uh, most of the, you can do like uh, a vitrectomy up to or down to one third of the globe. You can remove the the anterior one third of the vitreous cavity through an anterior approach. And I was successful in completely cleaning the tube in uh, this patient. Now this patient is one in uh, and uh, in this patient, I think we are coming uh, close to an end. Uh, the patient had previous trap and fail. It was angle closure glaucoma, and we don't do trap for angle closure glaucoma. Anyway, underwent trap, failed, and then he presented with cataract, and I did this patient cataract surgery and valve implantation. Actually, the implantation of the valve in patient with angle closure is not easy because the whole orbit is shallow, not only the eye. Now, what happened, the patient came in a couple of days with pressure of 55. And this is the old trabeculectomy. And then this is the site of tube insertion. And I really don't know what happened to this patient. We were like at um, 11.30 p.m. and then for very late and he's one eye patient and the vision dropped to hand motion or even less with this very high intraocular pressure then i kept thinking what happened to this patient the patient is having high femur uh, clotted blood occluding the pupil but not completely it is uh, not completely occluding the pupil there is generalized shallowing of the anterior chamber then as you can see yes but there are some areas here actually but the patient at the same time is having a patent iridectomy. So what happened to this patient? Of course, it was very late and I need to solve this patient. I know that you can think of the possible uh, diagnosis. Mohammed had the can you talk about the possible diagnosis in this case? Now, um, can Zumala had the Sharik Mana? Had the shallow the patient had the generalized shallowing of the anterior chamber, patent iridex after a valve, after a valve in angle closure glaucoma. So what are the possibilities? Pupillary block, we have a good patent iridectomy. Malignant glaucoma. ممكن نفكر في malignant glaucoma صح لا إجابة ممتازة خاصة. The layout of the angle closure glaucoma generally are prone to angle closure glaucoma, but uh, I, I never saw an angle uh, an, a malignant glaucoma after a valve. Okay? But I thought this could be the most probable diagnosis. Now, when it comes to malignant uh, glaucoma management in this patient, I put the diagnosis as malignant glaucoma. What to do? Again, the pressure is very high. I cannot see the tube because what happened is that with the generalized shallowing, shallowing of the anterior chamber, the iris moved forward and then it, the tube probably passed through the iris into the sulcus. So I cannot see the tube anymore. Um, can we think of a solution in this patient? Can you help? And it's very difficult to send the patient uh, home for this situation. How long can you focus how to help this patient?
uh, as I put the diagnosis of malignant glaucoma, we know the management of the malignant glaucoma. What? What is the management of malignant glaucoma? We can push atropine, we can push uh, uh, steroids, we can push anti-glaucoma, but actually we need good management. The management of the malignant glaucoma is to create a communication between the anterior chamber and the vitreous cavity. Okay? So this is the management. We need to have a communication so that the vitreous, instead of moving into the vitreous cavity, will move through this communication into the anterior chamber. So that if you want to do just anterior vitrectomy, then the malignant glaucoma will be recurrent because you did not create a communication. So that I thought that this patient is having a patent peripheral eye reduction. So why not to go with the YAG laser to open the anterior capsule, to open the posterior capsule, and to open the anterior hyaloid? Then I thought, yes, sometimes in some patients, don't take an immediate action that you can put the patient ask the patient to wait in the waiting area and then think what could be done, think at ease. Okay? And then I thought, yes, I have my YAG laser next, uh, in the next room, so why not to try to YAG this patient on the assumption that the patient is having malignant glaucoma. And then that's what I have done to this patient. And the patient came in a couple of days, look what happened, that the anterior chamber started to form and then the blood clot started to adequately dissolve, and the pressure immediately dropped to 12. And then the anterior chamber started to form. So, and the tube was not still, the tube was not visible. The tube is here, and I know the tube, I put it with my hands. The tube is here, but I'm actually I cannot see at the moment. But again, I, I was happy because I was in the right direction when the patient is having malignant glaucoma. I communicated through the patent eye redectomy, the, I, the, the anterior capsule, the posterior capsule, and anterior hyaloid. And then this was the picture one month later. The eye becomes quiet, the anterior chamber forms the remnants of the membrane. But again, I cannot see the tube. And, but I feel that the tube is uh, it's elevating the peripheral part of the iris. Uh, so why not to go for another YAC session to cut this membrane? Uh, it looks like cat's eyes. This can give more visibility. And then a second laser session at ease. And what happened? You will be surprised because once I cut the iris uh, above the tube with few laser shots, now the tube, I can see my tube. This is very strange. And now the membrane has almost begun and the patient is enjoying a pressure of like 12 millimeter. It's now like three years and is having the same situation. That was one year, but he comes every six months. And that was, it, it's very strange. But again, the idea is that with simple intervention, sometimes you can manage huge solutions. Uh, what we say that pay less to get more, pay less to get more. I don't have to take the patient to the OR and then remove the blood clot and do anterior vitrectomy. It is just we need to think of uh, some smarter solution. In a while, my patient, uh, every time I see this patient, you know that I pray to uh, Allah because it is, it was really, um, it was, I, I was gifted to manage this patient this way, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And this is the situation, two years, again, uh, the pressure is 12. I'm adding brimonidine because the optic, his optic nerve is extremely poor, extremely poor optic nerve. And you know where the problem started in this patient? By doing trabeculectomy in a patient with chronic angle closure glaucoma. Then because afterwards he developed cataract and the pressure was not controlled and the conjunctiva is a scar, then I had to go through a different uh, way of removing the cataract and putting a valve. Again, for patients with chronic angle closure glaucoma, we start by removal of the cataract and we can add some, uh, some glaucoma uh, operation. And so you can think of the difference at the time of presentation and the, the amount of uh, agitation and nervousness that the patient was suffering at the time of presentation. And then now after two to three years with simple solution, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin, we need to think this way all the time. Uh, so this was the message. Uh, 
Uh, now this came to the uh, conclusion of my uh, lecture and ready for talks, but I'm going to leave this, uh, Mohammed, for you and for the colleagues. The next Ijesco, inshallah, will be at Alexandria Hilton King's Ranch, uh, February 8th to 10th, uh, February 2024. So please, you are all invited. You can uh, communicate the uh, local companies because uh, they are. Um, we have most of them uh, sponsoring the event uh, to give you the opportunity to attend and we promise you an excellent program uh, inshallah inshallah dr ahmed wa tawfi inshallah fi al-mu'tamar allah yakhliq ya muhammad law had ando ay as'ala yani i would love to او او to share the experience لازم تكون اسئله you can share the experience دكتور احمد ممكن اسال سؤال ساذج تاني؟ <تصفيق> طيب والله انا انا بخاف من اسئلتك لا والله انا انا بس اسال ال في وان اوف ذا يور اوبريشن يو منشن ان الفيترس اوكيلود عملت لوكج للتيوب وي اول نو فيترس از 99% ووتر كومبوننت سو هاو ووتر كان اوكيلود ذا تيوب سو ات سيم ذير از inflammatory process outside the tube, not the vitreous. دي حاجة. الحاجة التانية اللي عايز الاكسبرينس بتاعتك من فضلك وانت بتعمل follow up لذوس kind of patient اللي انت عملت drainage and plant هل بتشوف الامباكت على الفيجوال فيلد؟ هل في اي امبروفمنت للفيجوال بروجريشن index؟ شكرا ربنا يخليك يا هنيجي لي ال طبعا نخلي بالنا هو يعني اللي بيحكم الامبروفمنت اوف فيجن حاجات كثيره لا اذا ذا بري ابلس بريشر واز فيري هاي ذن يو اكسبكت امبروفمنت ان ذا فيجوال اكشن اذا ذا بيشنت از يوزنج لوتس اوف ميديكيشن افكتنج ذا اوكولار سيرفيس اند ذن يو اكسبكت امبروفمنت ان ذا فيجوال اكشن اذا ذا بيشنت از هافينج اسوسييتد كاتر ذن يو اكسبكت امبروفمنت ان ذا فيجوال فانكشن جنرالي سبيكينج يو نو ان ذا موست اوف ذا جلوكوما اوبريشنز Uh, are not meant for uh, improving the visual uh, functions or acuity. So sometimes uh, the vision even drops a little after uh, any kind of uh, uh, glaucoma operation. Um, the first question that the vitreous can occlude uh, the tube, the vitreous is a gel, uh, and the vitreous can significantly occlude uh, the tube. And in my patient, The pressure was quite high, and after I cleared the tube, uh, uh, I, you know that uh, I know you are thinking of the inflammation, but there was no evidence that inflammation per se can occlude uh, a tube. But in this patient, and actually the vitreous, uh, the vitreous gel uh, could occlude uh, the tube. The, 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 you know that for the for the silicone, for example. <clears throat> The, there are some debates whether the silicone could occlude the lumen of the tube or not, because you know most of the post-silicone uh, uh, post-silicone glaucomas they prefer to put the tube inferior, not to be occluded by silicone. But uh, some uh, opinions that the silicone itself might not uh, occlude the tube and it can migrate through the implant. Tariq, you said the visual index, yes? Yeah, the visual progression you, index. Could, could you, I know, I know. Could you, the, could you, uh, could you explain this, Yatariq, Allah Samah? So, ehna ma bningi ni'amal Allah, when you're doing the visual field, one of the parameters is the VFI, the visual field oh, index, see, which I is telling, telling us if there is a deterioration or improvement. Mm. So, I understand I the any glaucoma operation is to preserve what's left. It's not to improve the visual outcome, but... What I mean is to think proactive, what is the next step if something failed? What we have to do? We monitor those patients for years. So once you do this operation, do you see like reduction of the VFI or slow in reduction? That's what I meant by the, the, uh, the one question, uh, the, the first uh, question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yatar. And I think that, uh, you know, that... Um, I really, uh, I haven't seen a patient with, uh, uh, you know, if the pressure is nicely controlled, 
you tend to keep uh, investigations ev a minimum at uh, every year. But uh, to the best of my memory, I don't remember that a patient with valves and controlled the pressure uh, it has a field deterioration. But you know, it is just a very personal opinion at our uh, on a very broad scientific scale. دكتور أحمد في سؤال لو عيان ديبولب بكاتاركت هو كان فكك وعمل تيوب سيرجري كان يونج ايج مثلا وليتر اون بعد مثلا 5 أو 6 ييرز مثلا ديبولب بكاتاركت ونيد كاتاركت سيرجري فيكو بقى فهل في سبيشال كونسيدريشنز مثلا ممكن الواحد يتخذها في عيان عامل تيوب وهيعمل كاتاركت سيرجري؟ يعني الحالات اللي احتاجت كاتركت يا محمد ما فيش سبيشال بريكوشنز كانت عندي ولكن احيانا بعتبر ال I think that the cataract surgery is a chance to give the valve another push so that if the valve was borderline you can flush the tube from inside this could help a better IOP control Um, the, I think he will choose the, the incision uh, in an area that's not interfering with the, the tube. You can think of some mechanical issues. Uh, but I have few patients with uh, valves then they required cataract surgery. And at the time of cataract surgery, if there was a problem in the tube, like the patient with congenital glaucoma, I thought that the tube is long touching the cornea. I'm going to manage the uh, tube by uh, making it shorter. Uh, if the pressure is borderline, I'm going to flush the tube. I may get something better. Uh, otherwise, uh, technical issues, no, I haven't met. يعني بخصوص الفلويد دايناميكس هل بتنترفير with with irrigation and usually uh, after long time, حتى مع الترابيكيلكتومي ما بتلاقيش مثلا جالك شالونج اوف ذا انتيرير تشامبر لان يوجولي ذير از سيجنيفيكانت سكارينج بتخلي الفلو ما مش ما تعملكش لوس اوف ذا انتيرير تشامبر لا يو ستيل ذا اي اي ديدنت ميد ا بروبلم مع ال مع الاستابيلتي اوف ذا انتيرير تشامبر في حاله فالف ولا حتى زي ما بقول لك ولا في حاله ترابيكيلكتومي او ديب سكيلكتومي عاديه لا ما شفتش ممرش بيا هذا الانسدنت يعني. طيب هل التيوب بوزيشن بيبقى ريبوزيشن بقى اكوردنج لو مثلا لو كان عيان عمل بقى كاتراكت هل مثلا بعد ست او سبع سنين احرك بقى تيوب ثاني اخرجه واخليه في السلكس بعد ما ازرع او اخليه مثلا غير مكانه ايه؟ تكنيكالي ما تعرفش لان هو برضو التعامل مع الـ مع التيوب اللي انت تفتح عليها اتس نوت ا بيس اوف كيك فهي تكنيكالي مش اتس نوت ذات ايزي لما امتى بنعمل الكلام ده لو لقينا ان البيشنت مثلا هيز اندوثيليوم از باد اف ذا دايركشن اوف ذا تيوب از نوت ابروبري انما طبعا لو البيشنت يبقى عنده سبع سنين سكسس ومفيش مشاكل ده طارق هيتبسط قوي من السؤال بتاعك بقى اشرف يا محمد. اف التيوب لو التيوب في مكانها مش عاملينها مشاكل احنا ما بنفتحش عليها تاني. تمام انا غيرت انا غيرت الكيس دي لان الكورنيا لان التيوب كانت تاتشنج ذا كورنيا اند ذا ريست اوف ذا كورنيا كان الاندوثيريوم بدا يبقى بور. فعشان كده انا حركت التيوب لورا بس دي تكنيكالي مش دايما يعني لو انت جيت تفتح على الفالف ثاني وتطلع التيوب انت احيانا تفت... انت شايف التيوب يو سي ذا تيوب يو ذا كونش اند يو ثينك ات از اكسسبل اند ذن وين يو جو فور ذي سكشن يو فايند لايرز اند لايرز اند لايرز لايرز اوف تيشيز اند يو كان كات ذا تيوب اكسيدنتلي فا لا ات از نوت ايزي طيب بالنسبه لل للكوست بقى بتاعتها يعني هل الفالف او تيوب الهندي مثلا كافيكسي كومبارابل لاحمد فالف او الاذر فالف مثلا هل يعني بالنسبه للبيشنت مثلا المصري او كده لو هو مثلا مش هيقدر يافورد الحاجه اللي هي البراند كجينيريك بقى هل يعني كتجربه حضرتك للانديان جينيريك برودكت ده 
بص يا محمد هو لما تدخل في الليترشر هتلاقي الكومباريزون ما بين الباتس كلها ار اولموست مور اور ليس ذا سيم لدرجه ان في ستادي اسمها اي بي سي اللي هو احمد احمد بارفلت كومباريزون هي اسمها ستادي كده حاولوا يكومبير لان اشمعنى امريكا ماشيين مع بارفلت واشمعنى اوروبا وافريقيا ماشيين مع احمد يعني ايه ال... فعملوا ستاديز بالشكل ده فلقوا انه الاوفر رول افكسي از ذا سيم ولكن في بعض الملاحظات الملاحظات بتقول كالتالي ان النون فالفت امبلانتس عندهم تشانس اوف ايرلي بوست اوبريتيف هايبوتوني اكتر خلاص فنخلي بالنا بقى يعني ايه نخلي بالنا واحنا واحنا وين وي لايك ذا تشوب اند وي بوت ذا ستنت يعني التشوب محتاجه شغل عشان كده لما يكون الشخص بيجنر بنقول لا خلينا في الفالفت امبلانت تمام اللونج تيرم افكاسي في حصل حواليها ديبيتس كده شويه ولكن السبورترز للبارفلت قالوا انه سلايتلي بيتر ذان احمد اللونج تيرم كونترول وبالتالي انت لو البيشنت بتاعك محتاج لوكوما درينج ديفايس وعندك الاورو لاب او كده يس يو كان بروسيد بس بريفيربلي تبقى انت متعود على الديسكشن اوف ذا ماسلز لان الاورو لاب بيدخل تحت الماسلز الديسكشن بتاعه وحجمه اكبر فالديسكشن بتاعك من بياخد منك مجهود شويه والحاجه الثانيه لازم جدا لازم تتاكد ان التيوب اولموست كومبليتلي اوكلودد واحيانا الناس بتعمل حاجه اسمها فينتنج يعني التيوب بتتقفل وبيتعمل زي سليت في الفالف من قدام كده بحيث يطلع يطلع شويه اكواس برضه ما يبقاش كومبليتلي بلوك ولكن ديفينتلي النون فالف امبلانت زي الـ الـ احنا ما عندناش باربل بس اللي هو الفيرجن بتاع الانديان اورو لاب الافكسي ات ذا اند اوف ذا داي اتس ذا سيم بس محتاجه شغل ومحتاجه اكسبيرينس ومحتاجه بيشنت يجي فور فول اب يعني ما فيش حاجه يا محمد في الاخر ايه ما فيش رايت اور رونج ما فيش بلاك اور وايت بس في حاجه محتاجه اي نو ان الايكونومي طبعا اسهل مع الاورو لاب ويتش از اوكي تمام ممكن اعمل فيري كويك كومنت ريجاردنج سؤالك يا دكتور محمد هنا معظم موست اوف ذا كلينيكال ترايل دي ايفالويت ذا افكسي اوف ذا of the device itself regardless the name of the device we don't go into how the device get manufactured what material uh, if you need to search more you have to go to i triple e this is where uh, the literature about the composition the material etc just a quick comment it's, it's a little bit different اه طبعا طبعا لعلك هو طبعا الماتيريال اللي اتغيرت يعني كانت البريشر كنترول ده بيعتمد على ميكانكس طبعا كتيره السايز اوف ذا امبلانت والماتيريال واللي غيروها من بولي بروبايلين لسيليكون في يعني في قصه كده بس الدايركت كويشن يا طارق محمد مش غير الاورو لاب نستعمله يس وي يوز ات بس بريفيربلي يبقى حد اكسبيرينس سيرجن تو مانج هل في حالات حضرتك احتجت تعمل السيرجري على تو ستيبس يعني ستيب لل نعمل ال عشان يحصل زي سيست كده للتينون سيست وبعدين بعد كده تاتش تيوب بعد 3 مانثز مثلا او هو طبعا طبعا انا فاهم سؤالك يا محمد كويس اللي بيتكلم على الهايبر سنسيف بيز ان انت كل ما تمنع تخلي تحط البليت بس ويحصل حواليه الرياكشن والريمودلنج وكل الكلام ده وبعد كده تو ري انسرش ذا تشوب طبعا اتعملت شغل زي كده اللي هو تو ستيج بس يعني انا مثلا يعني انا بحس انه بالنسبه لي صعب ان انا تو ادميت ذا بيشنت لان احنا غالبا لما بنحط البالس بنبقى مزنوقين في البريشر يعني غالبا البيشنت البريشر بتاعه عالي فكون ان انا احط له البالس واحط التيوب في السب كونجكتابل سبيس وبعد كده افتح العين بعد وات ايفر بيريود وان انا اي ري انسرت وانا مدخله اساسا البريشر بتاعه عالي يعني مش عارف قد ايه دي براكتيكال يعني الفكره ظريفه خلاص انما قد ايه هي براكتيكال مره ثانيه مش مش عارف يعني انا ما انا ما عنديش بيرسونال يعني ما حدش 
تمام حضرتك طيب ممكن حضرتك في يعني نبذه مختصره تكلمنا عن الاس ال تي كده انا عارف ان هو خارج نطاق ال المحاضرة يعني بس ايه رأي حضرتك فيه كبروسيديور وايه افكاسي بتاعته؟ والله يا محمد الاس ال تي طبعا اللي هو سيلكتف ليزر ترابيكولوبلاستي وهو عشان الناس اللي موجودين ان بريف وتريت ذا ترابيكولار مش ورك ويز فريكونسي دبل دياج ليزر الهدف منه تستيميليت الاندوثيليا سيلز لايننج ترابيكولم تو هاف بيتر اوت فلو محصلة اللي اللي بيحصل ريسنتلي ايه؟ ان انت لما بيجي بيشنت عندنا كذا جروب اوف بيشنت، بيجي بيشنت ماشي على فول تريتمنت، ماشي على كل تريتمنت بتعرفه، ان البريشر از 24 25، ان فور وان ريزون اور انذر ذا بيشنت دازنت وونت تو هاف سيرجري. البيشنت ده نساعده ازاي احسن؟ اول ما صارت الستاريز قال لك هنعمل له اس ان تي، هنعالج الترابيكلا المشور بيدينا <تصفيق> some reduction in the intraocular pressure in the range of 20% reduction of the intraocular pressure. And the studies بعد كده اتحركت في اتجاه طب انا لما يجي لي patient recently diagnosed انا كده قاعد في العياده جا لي patient ظريف جدا pressure بتاعه 27 الديسك بتاعه معقول مش ما عندوش advanced damage وما خدش treatment خالص. لو انا عملت البيشنت ده SLT لو حاجه فيري انتريستنج ان الريسبونس بتاعه احسن ان هو يبقى برايمري تريتمنت ومش الريسبونس بتاعه احسن بس الريسبونس بتاعه لما يحتاج ري تريتمنت احسن انه في نسبه منهم النسبه من الاس ال تي بيحتاجوا ري تريتمنت ممكن 22 30% بيحتاجوا على فترات متفاوته. الاستدي دي طلعت في انجلترا اللي هو اللي هو السيلكتف ليزر ترابيكلوبلاستي فور Uh, ocular hypertension and primary open angle glaucoma. وقالوا انه الايكونومي بتاعها احسن وان اللايف ستايل بتاعها احسن وكل حاجه احسن وبدا يحصل بوش للستادي دي والامريكا ادوبتد الكلام ده في الميديكير وفي الهيلث سيستم عندها بحيث انه يا ريت ان البيشنت الريسنتلي دايجنوز يتعمل له اس ال تي وتزقه كذا سنه قبل ما قد يحتاج حاجه. انا في البراكتس بعمل نفس الشيء لما يجي لي بيشنت البيشنت ده لو جالي بيشنت هو كنترول اساسا على وان ميديكيشن وما فيش حاجه اي دونت اوفر للبيشنت اني ثينج عادي بس يبقى كنترول ما بديروش يعني طول ما هو مش متضايق ولا ما بديروش اوبشنز ثانيه خلاص هي فاين بعمل له فولو اب زي ما طارق قال بكل حاجه الفيجوال فيلد اندكس انما البيشنت الريسنتلي دايجنوز ده انا فعلا بدي له وقت واهتمام ان هو ممكن يستفيد من الاس ال تي وفي دكا وفي دكاتره رمض كان يعني عندهم بروبلمز هم ذات نفسهم يتعالجوا باس ال تي هو ظريف للناس اللي بس ما يكونش عندهم بريشر هاي لان احنا لما عملنا الاستدي على الايجيبشن كان عندنا بعد ثلاث سنين الريدكشن كان 18% فما نختارش بيشنت بقى يكون بريشر بتاعه 35 الارقام العاليه دي ونخلي بالنا انه يبقى اوبن انجل جلوكوما لان كان احيانا برضه بلاقي الناس بتعمل ريفيرال لحالات انجل كلوجر جلوكوما ومفيش اي رول للاس ال تي بل الاس ال تي ظريف قوي هيفيدك في ثلاث محطات المحطه الاولانيه بيشنت ريسنتلي دايجنوز وعنده مايلد تو مودريت ده جميل جدا ده افضل واحد المحطه الثانيه لو بيشنت ماشي على وان ميديكيشن اند هي وونت تو ستوب المحطه الثالثه And the patient has to multiple medications when he needs surgery, and he doesn't want or she doesn't want surgery. Till SLT, can he feel quite? He some, uh, يعني debates about the SLT for different types of glaucomas. Uh, generally speaking, ما بيبقاش محبب أو للناس اللي هو pressure initially low that are normal tension glaucoma. آه بس في بعض الناس برضه حاجه ظريفه قوي من نو ماتنشن جلوكوما لما الانتر اوكا بريشر بيقل 2 تو 3 ملم بينقلهم في منطقه سيفر آه آه تمام الجوفينايلز اي دونت اوفر جوفينايلز جوفينايل اوبن ان جلوكوما نو اي دونت اوفر سكندري وسيليكون جلوكوما ولا يوبيتك ولا الحاجات دي خالص آه انما ممكن اس ال تي الحالات اللي استفيد منه برايمري اوبن ان جلوكوما pseudo exfoliation glaucoma with cautious in uh, pigmentary uh, glaucoma 
uh, and occasionally in patients with normal tension glucose. Uh, والتكنيك سهل يا محمد انت يمكن تكون عارفه برضه التكنيك هو ابسط حاجه في الموضوع. تمام حضرتك. معنا دكتور خالد عوض استشاري في رمض اسكندريه وصاب سبيشالتي جلوكوما حابب برضو يشارك معنا في النقاش استفسر عنه لا هو يسيبنا مش يستفسر يسيبنا اتفضل يا هو هيكتب السؤال بتاعه كتابة عشان هو تقريبا في مشكلة في المايك او اه اه انا انا اشوف فين يا محمد الاسئلة المكتوبة انا مش عارف ادوس على ايه على ال على الشات بتاع الجروب يعني على الجروب نفسه اه اوكي انا اذا المفروض اطلع من حاجة يعني مور مثلا انا انا عندي فيديو سكرين والساوند مور ليف هم دول الموجودين عندي الشاف انا شايف المجموعه انا شايف المجموعه فعلا لا خلاص انا شايف انا شايفهم دكتور احمد بالغيط لما الدكتور محمد يكتب في الشات بالنسبه للتيوب بليسمنت هاو يو يو جادج اتس ان ذا رايت بليس اواي فروم ذا كورنيا طبعا وذ يور اكسبيرينس يو ديبند اون ذا سليت لاند دو يو ريكومند انتيرور سيجمنت ايمجينج جاست تو جادج ذا بوزيشن اوف ذا تيوب دي حاجه الحاجه الثانيه اللي هي هتكلمنا على السلكتيف ليزر ترابيكولاستي اي ريكول ذير واز لايت ستادي كان في ستادي بتقول الافكسي زي الميديكال افتر ميديكال تريتمنت افتر 36 مانث ف ذيس از ستيل ذا كيس اور ثينكس هاز بين تشينج لا ما هو صار انا عايز ارحب بالناس الموجوده انا شايف دكتور اسامه النحراوي وشايف مجموعه من الزملاء اللي انا عارفهم يعني اشكرهم ان هم معانا ذات ليت يعني ثانك يو فيري ماتش هاو تو جادج ذا تشوب انت مهم جدا ان انت ما تسيبش البيشنت انتر اوبريتيف للجادجمنت بوست اوبريتيف يعني انت انتر اوبريتيف عارف الدايركشن بتاع التشوب بتاعتك ماشيه فين يمكن يكون افضل حاجه ان انت تخلي التيوب ممكن تبقى تاتشنج الايس فتبقى انت مطمن ان هي بعيده عن الكورن التيوب التاتشنج الايرس ممكن تبقى عامله كده سلايد ايرس اتروفي كده بسيط بس مش نوت ا بروبلم يعني فانت ما تسيبوش للبوست اوبريتيف واحيانا بيحصل ان الواحد تو انسرت ذا تيوب اند ذن يشعر ان هو لا التيوب مش كده تو جيت ذا تيوب اوت اند ذن اعمل انذر انتري لان نفس الانتري هيؤدي الى نفس النتيجه. آه فدي القصه ان انت تجادج التيوب بالامجنج انت يوجولي طبعا انت يو كان سي وذ امجنج بس اي ثينك ان انت عشان تشوفها بالامجنج الصوره ظريفه ان انت تشوفها بس ستيل بوسيبل ان كل حاجه تبقى سين كلينيكلي قدام عينيك و يعني زي ما بقول لك انا ما فضلتش الواحد يسيب التيوب في وضع هو مش متاكد البوزيشن بتاعها فين. آه انما هتجادج هتلاقي ان لو الدايركشن بتاعها ابنورمال او الكورنيا فوقيها بدات يحصل فيها سم تشينج يو نيد تو مانج ديفينيتلي. ده كان التيوب. آه بالنسبه للايت ستادي اللي هي الليزر ما دي اللي انا الملخص اللي انا قلته يا طارق اللي هو اللايت في الاوكيلر هايبر تنشن والاوبن انجل. جلوكوما ستيل ذير از ابوش في اتجاه ال باتجاه البرايمري تريتمنت والريسنت ريزالتس يمكن انا سمعتها في يمكن امريكان اكاديمي اللي فاتت ان لقوا لما الناس بيحتاجوا ري تريتمنت الريزالتس بتاعتهم افضل من ان واحد يتعمل له ري وكان اوريدي اون ميديكيشن يعني بداوا يطلعوا كده انت عارف كل ما الترايل بتمتد كل ما بيطلع منها نتائج. فستيل دي ار ان ذيس دايركشن وبناء على كده في بوش لدرجه ان طلع دلوقتي الدايركت اس ال سي اللي هو بيتعمل في 1 سكند اللي هو تريتنج ذا هول سيركمفرنس ان 1 سكند ال 100 شوتس بيطلعوا ات ذا سيم تايم تو تريت ذا لمبس اكسترنالي مش انترنالي. في برضه بوش في الاتجاه ده كوميرشال بوش في الاتجاه ده. السلام عليكم دكتور 
اهلا وسهلا اتعوض من اسكندريه اهلا دكتور خالد اهلا وسهلا اهلا وسهلا بشكرك على المحاضره الممتعه والرائعه دي وسهرناك معلش بس كان والله. عندي سؤالين الله يكرمك يا خالد الله يكرمك اتفضل السؤال الاولاني على الطريقه اللي حضرتك بتعملها اللي هي البوكت دي وانا سمعتها مع حضرتك قبل كده او البوكت اند فلاب يعني تريبل سانل تريبل سانل اه التان بالظبط حضرتك بتفضلها علشان علشان بس الكونفورتابيلتي بتاعت البيشنت ولا الافيلابيلتي بتاعت الجرافت مثلا اللي هي يعني ليه حضرتك مش بتفضل الجرافت مع ان هي ممكن تكون تكنيكالي اسهل بالذات للي مش اكسبرت قوي في في القصه بتاعت الفالف دي. الحاجه الثانيه البول امبلانت حضرتك جربته او عندك اكسبيرينس له لان الاستاديز دلوقتي كلها على البول امبلانت وفي في الاسكرز اللي فات ده يعني كذا استادي وكذا محاضره كانت بتتكلم عليه وعلى الريزلتس بتاعته ان هو افضل كتير من بقيه الامبلانتس على الاقل النون فالف يعني علشان او مقارنه بالنون فالف علشان التيوب سايز بتاعه واليومن سايز والهايبوتوني اقل وكده فكنت عايز خبره حضرتك في الموضوع ده او رايك لان انا سمعت ان هو خلاص يعني تو بي ريجسترد في مصر وهيبقى افيلابل قريب جدا في السوق المصري ان شاء الله. صح ربنا يكرمك يا خالد. بالنسبة لسؤالك الأولاني ليه أنا بحب التريبل تانل بحب التريبل تانل لأن بحب I place the, the valve posterior وبالتالي أنا عندي long التيوب في الآخر لما بنيجي نترم منها أنا في التكنيك ده الجزء اللي بعمله تريمنج صغير جدا أصلا يعني most of the tube بتبقى وأحيانا حاجات لا تذكر يبقى أنا الهدف أن أنا أرجع البليت ورا لما برجع البليت ورا قوي ان انا اسيب التيوب اكسبوز كل هذه الديستنس يعني ما ما كنتش متوقع ان انا احط امبلانت يغطي معظم القصه دي عشان كده قررت ان انا اعملها بارينج انسايد ليسكليه انما برضو انا هرجعك لعنوان المحاضره ان هي شيرنج ذا اكسبيرينس ان هي مش ما فيش رايت اور رونج في كل واحد احيانا بتنجح في ايده تكنيك بشكل معين انما ده التكنيك اللي انا ان انا ارتحت له واللي احنا دلوقتي ان شاء الله يا ربنا ييسر لنا حال قريبا عندنا عدد كبير من الحالات وبنعمل ديزايننج للداتا بتاعته فده كان السبب ان انا التيوب البليت برجعه ورا قوي فانا التيوب مش عايز اغطيها عند اللمبس بس هي كده كل التيوب متغطي بالنسبة للبول امبلانت انا عارف ان هو هيبقى موجود انا ما عنديش عنه اكسبيرينس بصراحة لما يجي لنا في مصر هنبدا بقى نجمع نوع من الاكسبيرينس عنه لما طبعا يعني انا كل اللي سمع عنه زي ما انت سمع عنه كده بالظبط لحد ما يبقى افيلابل ان شاء الله هو انا معايا واحد يعني جبته من ابو ظبي بس مش عارف يعني خايف استخدمه قبل ما اسمع اكسبيرينس مباشره من حد من ال من اللي بثق فيهم يعني علشان اقدر ان انا استخدمه وانا مطمن يعني الله يخليك يا اخي ده البول امبلانت الوحيد اللي هتلاقيه في مصر تقريبا <تصفيق> معاك ما اعرفش يا خالد الاول ما يكون عندي انا مش عارف الشركه الشركه اللي كانت بس اعتقد ان حد كان كلمني عنه من الشركه بس انا مش فاكرها بصراحه انما انا ما عنديش دايركت اكسبيرينس ولكن ستيل يو كان جيت يعني ترستد اكسبيرينس من ناس ابرود ان شاء الله يا خالد. خالد انا بحييك على نشاطك بصراحه يعني يعني انت عامل شغل رائع وجميل ربنا يكرمك ويوفقك يا اخي. ربنا يكرمك ومعلش سهرناك شكرا جزيلا دكتور لا وبالعكس والله الله يكرمك يا رب ما فيش اي حاجه بس هي ده بالعكس انا سعيدني ان ان احنا نتبادل المعلومات اكيد ما فيش كلام متشكرين دك... متشكرين جدا دكتور احمد وتشرفنا بمحاضره حضرتك الشيقه وان شاء الله لنا لقاءات متكرره قريبه باذن الله شكرا يا محمد وانا بهنيك على مجهودك وبدعو ان ربنا يعينك لان انا بحس ان انت يو هاف تو مانج منت تو منت وسكند تو سكند 
فربنا يوفقك كيب اون الاكتيفيتي الجميله اللي انت فيها دي واتوقع للمجموعه دي ان هي الخير يعم بشكل رائع ان شاء الله شكرا جزيلا لحضرتك شكرا يا فندم شكرا شكرا جزيلا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام